Pierre Dorian is looking for a forward. <laughs> Who do you think they should target? Should we go UFAs first and then trade targets? Or do you yeah. want to get spicy with trades right off the bat? Let, let's start with the UFAs because uh, we've already kind of touched on them, but we want to make sure to include them in this episode. So let's start with that. Okay, let's get people in the comments because we're just going to we're gonna spoil. There's two forwards left that are like very legit targets. Vladimir Tarasenko, Tomas Tatar. Who do you prefer? Let us know in the comments because I was shocked that their point totals were as close as they are. And there was another shocking stat on Thomas Tatar. Should we pull up the graphic right now and just let the people yeah. see just the eye-popping plus minus on this guy? Thomas Tatar, I mean, yeah, he's getting a little bit older. Sure, but the production has not gone south for the 32, soon to be 33-year-old in the National Hockey League. 82 games last year, a perfect season in terms of health and availability. 20 goals, 28 assists, good for 48 points, had 30 penalty minutes, and was plus 41. What kind of contract do you think Tatar is looking for? I'm not really sure, to be honest, Ross. Um, Like, I'm not sure if he's going to be one of those guys that him and his agents are looking at the landscape of things and being like, ah, we think we can get a better deal here because he's, how old is he? So he's 32. So you can probably get one more kind of medium term deal cash in and you uh, in free agency rather. So maybe he's thinking I'll do a one year deal at a decent cap hit just to fit myself on a good team and get into a good situation, have another good season and then sign my last big ticket in free agency next year. Or maybe he's at a point where he's like, Hey, 48 points in 82 games and a plus 41. That's probably as kind of good as it's going to get for me here. This is a good time to cash in. So maybe he'll try to get a three or four year deal uh, this year. I'm not sure what uh, what direction he would want to go and more specifically where he would want to go with it, with the Sens if he would have a certain strategy there. Right. Two years. He signed, he's coming off a two year contract with a four point five million dollar cap hit. It was a backloaded contract so last year he made 5.25 million dollars i'm shocked he hasn't signed yet and i'm curious to see what the totals look if he's a guy i think when you're when you're that age and and you're coming off that season i think a a higher salary on a one-year deal is is probably the preference no kind of get that or if you want the stability maybe you will sign for for three five or three eight and try to get three years term and you know push it to where you think the production might not be there but i'm of the mind that tatar would be a better fit for ottawa than vladimir tarasenko Sens have some trigger men already i I don't think that necessarily is what they need i think it's kind of a middle another middle six score kind of like the numbers are very similar to kubali like yeah. obviously the plus minus is different. They played in different situations, of course, but they each scored exactly 20 goals. Tatar had three more points, played one more game. Um, I think he was a little more consistent throughout the year. And that's something like a very, very poor man's Claude Giroux is kind of a, a Thomas Tatar where it's like, he's not the fastest out there. He's not the biggest, but hockey IQ is what's going to make him a successful NHL player. Yeah, and I think it would be good to get another veteran guy in. I mean, Tarasenko is at a similar part of his career, so I think uh, him or Tatar in that aspect would be a good boost here. And the thing I like about Thomas Tatar is he would probably come in a lower cap hit than Tarasenko, and he's a guy that you could flip-flop with Kubalik, uh, second-line, third-line wingers, and either way, I think I'd be comfortable either way. It's not like Tarasenko would be clearly the second-line guy and Kubalik would be the third-line guy, and you probably wouldn't switch And I think, Ross, Thomas Tatar is probably waiting for Tarasenko to sign. And then he can be like, okay, now I'm the top guy. Who's going to make space for me? Like, you want to compete with the team that just signed Tarasenko? Hit me up. Well, Vladimir Tarasenko is another option we have here. He played 69 games last season. Had a nice season. 50 points, 18 goals in the mix there. Only eight penalty minutes. And you noted that zero of those came with the New York Rangers after being traded near the NHL trade deadline. He was minus 14 on the season. Of course, he's a 2019 Stanley Cup champion. He brings pedigree. He's only one year removed from scoring 82 points or 85, well over a point per game in uh, in the 2021-22 season. And um, he would obviously add the name recognition, I think, a little bit more than a Thomas Tatar. But as you said, a little bit more expensive. And, I mean, yeah, he... he he definitely contributes and he had that great year two years ago, but also I'm a little bit more worried about the health 
and he's missed a lot of time. I know he was pretty critical of St. Louis, how they handled his shoulder surgeries a couple of years ago. But if he if he's 100% healthy, he's the better player of between him and Thomas Tatar. But I think Tatar is, is the more sure thing in terms of you know what you're going to get night in and night out, consistency-wise. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think the thing, too, like – the only option I see with Tarasenko is him signing that one year deal being like, I'm going to put myself in a good spot to cash in later. Like I don't like Vladimir Tarasenko is not signing a contract more than even two. Like I'd be surprised if he signs a two year deal with anyone right now. Uh, So I think if you're looking at Tarasenko, it'd be another one year deal. And then do you really want to have Tarasenko and Kubalika on one year deals here? And kind of if, neither of them decide to stay or sign an extension. Now you've got two same holes in your roster again. So I I like Tarasenko as an option. Obviously he comes closer to replacing to bring his goal totals, but I think with Tatar, you might be able to get him for a couple of years here and he'll be cheaper. You need that cap space, even though the cap is hopefully going up. You, having cap space when you're a team competing for a playoffs is it's crucial. Tarasenko is one year younger then Thomas Tatar as well and had three goals and four points in seven playoff games with the Rangers. And that's where you're getting probably the, the playoff point total is probably what gives him the name recognition a lot more than a Thomas Tatar. He has 44 goals and 64 points in 97 career playoff games. So 44 goals in 97 games, a pretty good pace there. He was second only to Jaden Schwartz in the 2019 playoffs for Uh, goal scoring output when he won that Stanley Cup. So those are the two UFA options for the Ottawa Senators. But if they're looking to trade Pilsy, I'm going to let you have your pick of the three guys we're going to bring up here. Who would be your number one choice to get in to the Ottawa Senators? Of course, knowing that we're, we're trying to be realistic in terms of guys who could be available and whose cap hit could be taken by Ottawa. Well, if you're passing it to me, I'm taking Travis Konechny 1-1 here for trade candidates. I mean, this is a guy that just makes so much sense for Ottawa right now. He's only 26 years old. He's a right shot, but he can play both the right side and the left side. At least EP has him uh, positioned as that. And he's coming off a career year. First time in his career he's had point-per-game pace and 61 points in 60 games. Actually ties his career high, which he had in 20 uh 19 20 20 but that was in six more games so right now he's a hot player he's got two years left at 5.5 that's such a valuable contract i think so my top trade target has to be travis connecting has to be and, but uh, i'm just a little worried about the, about the health and again maybe that's just me being once bitten twice shy with the ottawa senators and you know already having a guy like jacob chikrin who has had some problems staying healthy the last couple of years. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing by any stretch that they bought, that they brought him in. I know last year he played 79 out of 82 and the year before 50 out of 56, but even the year before, you know, he's missed almost 20 games this year. He missed 22 games, but I would, I would love it. Let's be clear. I I would love it, but I I do think there is a little bit of risk there with Travis Konechny. Uh, Are you worried at all? And, And maybe this is, is just too small of a sample size and it was in the COVID bubble and, you know, obviously that was just a strange time for everybody, but in 22 playoff games, he has exactly one goal and eight points. Like it's, it feels like we're, we're kind of contrasting that with Tarasenko where he comes to play when the games get big. You know what? That's a great point. I, I hadn't noticed that. Uh, Yeah. Only eight points in 22 playoff games. That definitely is something to look at here, but I just think the reason I'm okay with it, Ross is because connecting He's not going to have to be the guy. Like it's going to be similar to Alex DeBrinket. Like he's he's under Brady, Timmy, Claude, and Hopefully maybe I would Norris. even put Norris there, right? Oh, like, so yeah. So look, it's high risk, high reward. He got sixty one points in sixty games. He scored thirty goals in sixty games. Like if you can get sixty games out of him, you're probably getting mid twenty goals at least. So. I think it's a good gamble just because that's a nice contract if he's able to stay healthy. And I just think at that age, he's going to fit in so perfectly with this group. He makes it a little bit interesting, though, with the cap hit being what it is, 5.5. You'd probably have to look at like a Branstrom or a Joseph, those those or mid-level both. contracts. Or bo- oh, both would be almost an even swap. And, and then you're looking, like, would, would you do that with a first? Oh, absolutely. Brands- 
Yeah, yeah. It would probably cost more because it sounds like the next guy we're going to talk about, Scott Lawton, they declined two firsts from St. Louis, the last two firsts uh, for him. Scott Lawton has three years left at $3 million. He's played 78 games last year, has 43 points. Pilsy, you know how to make a splash? Why don't you just go big? Hey, Pierre Dorian at this point, I almost feel is kind of, you know, auditioning. Well, if, if the changes are going to continue to come, he might be auditioning for his next role. Why not take an enormous swing and try to get Lawton and Konechny? <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty damn impressive. Uh, I, I don't know if there's room for both, to be perfectly honest. Unless, well, unless uh, Joseph's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, And someone else probably even. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that would be interesting. Uh, now, Scott Lawton, just... Just on his own, uh, I'll touch on that. I think that would be a great acquisition as well. Similar to Travis Konechny, Scott Lawton's coming off a career year. 43 points is career high for him. And he's someone that I could see playing uh, on the left side of that third line. And I think he would be the driver of that line. And I think he would really help out Pinto. And uh, depending on if Joseph is a, would be a part of that deal or not, that would round out things pretty nicely here. So Scott Lawton is a great option because it's cheaper. He's got three years at three million, and that kind of solidifies Kubalik as that second line uh, winger, which I'm okay with. Yeah, I think the the constant between the three guys that we're bringing up in terms of trade candidates and say what you want about DJ system, but you need to have strong forechecking ability to play in his system well, and that's what these three all have in terms of Travis Konechny in terms of Scott Lawton who I think would be a great fit and he loves playing for DJ as well Pilsy spoke about it after the uh, world uh, world championships they won golden together Um, they also won the memorial cup together as members of the Oshawa generals in the OHL the third option again undersized but as gritty as they come from the Vancouver Canucks I'm looking at Connor Garland and yeah the contract's a little bit higher near five million dollars he's got an identical contract as Drake Batherson 4.95 but he has three years left in term last year had 46 points in 81 games had 17 goals and 31 penalty minutes uh, a little bit streaky when it comes to putting the puck in the net but for a, for a smaller stature player this guy battles in front of the net just about as hard as anyone in the league so I think kind of a pit bull mentality type player in Connor Garland and I think he would fit really well with the Ottawa Senators yeah I like Connor Garland as an option a lot as well uh, I think he's a guy that kind of provides that up tempo pace uh, he's going to be a hard four checker like you mentioned and the thing with Connor Garland is the Vancouver Vancouver Canucks they gotta get rid of some cap space like on cap friendly I'm pretty sure they're one of the top uh, teams like just just behind the Leafs maybe even and and the Habs no yeah just behind the Leafs is the Vancouver Canucks so they gotta free up some space here so I'm sure that's a deal you could use uh, you could do without even losing a roster player if you wanted. Like maybe maybe you send over Joseph because I don't think they're going full re- or rebuild mode. So maybe they're just trying to shed some cap here. But I think also uh, Vancouver would love Eric Brandstrom. That's their type of uh, up and coming defenseman. So I think there's some good options here. And Connor Garland is a guy that he's on three years. Sure, it's a little bit higher of a cap pit, but I think he could fit in very nicely on this team. Uh, Our friends over at Locked On Canucks had a great uh, headline grabber. They called it OE Hell because they're in cap hell because of the Oliver Ekman Larson buyout. Uh, So instead of OEL, OE Hell, I thought that was a good, good, good little nod there from our friends at Locked On Canucks. 